you know, you get called a nutritionist because there's some nutrition stuff in your book, but I'm really a biochemist. We're talking about fat cell chemistry, fat cell metabolism, and you can affect it a lot of ways. Exercise is the only way I know to get your fat cells to release fat when you need it right now so you can get rid of it. Then you send it to your muscles, and the question is, what do the muscles do with it? That would be the next thing. Well, what I did was I drew a fat cell just like the one before, and over here is a muscle cell, and you'll notice that underneath it I call the muscle cell the motor because it's like your car, and I call the fat cell, or like your kitchen, here's a pantry, but the point is that the fat cell, the purpose of fat cells is to store food, and the purpose of the muscle is to burn it up like the engine in your car, and so one shifts it over to the other. So what you're supposed to do is start to exercise. The muscle picks up the phone, calls the fat cell, and says, ship down those calories up there. If fat is supposed to leave the fat cell and go out like this and go through your blood and go down here to, say, your big thigh muscle, let's look a little bit at muscle just for a second and say, well, how does it burn it when it gets there? There's a muscle cell, and here's a cap... Whoops, I'm not supposed to do that. Here's a capillary coming along like this, carrying fat from your fat cells, carrying sugar from your lunch. And so the sugar comes along, and it goes in the muscle. Fat comes along, and it goes in the muscle. But we have a problem. In muscle cells, these things down here, big guys, here too, but these are so big. In muscle, sugar comes in and fat comes in, but sugar, in order to burn, doesn't require any oxygen. It can just burn up. It's called anaerobic combustion. But fat, when it comes to a fat cell, the proteins, the enzymes that are in every, I mean in muscle cells, in muscle cells, when a, when a fat molecule comes to a muscle cell, say you're running, and fat's released off of your body somewhere, and it comes down to this muscle. If a fat molecule comes to this muscle down here and it's working, if the muscle, pay attention, if the muscle is out of oxygen, it won't burn. It's called anaerobic metabolism. And so instead of burning up fat, it burns it just a little bit, but mostly it burns sugar and produces lactic acid. If you have lactic acid in a muscle, by definition, it's anaerobic sugar burning. You're not burning any fat at all, theoretically, theoretically. So you've got to slow down. You say, well, I want to burn fat off my leg. Then slow down and do some kind of exercise where the muscle doesn't get out of oxygen. You don't get the lactic acid. You need to have three things then before you're going to have complete metabolism in your muscles, before things are really going to work for you. You need fat coming in for energy, fat coming in like this. Then you have sugar coming in, and some of it stores here in case you want to store it for a while. And then it comes down, and they burn together. But you have to have one more thing, oxygen, O2. And the point is, you've got to have three things for combustion in there. You've got to have oxygen. You've got to have glucose. You've got to have fat. And if any one of the three is not there, then things don't run. What's the best fat-burning exercise? People ask me that a lot. And the answer is something that uses big muscles, that goes on and on and on, like this lecture. <laughs> <laughs> and you can talk to me at the same time. Those are the three rules. Try to memorize that. Now, that means that any exercise that is basically on your feet are the ones you're going to start. Those are the ones that are going to burn the most fat in the least amount of time. Which are the best exercises? And let's give them a proper amount of time. If you walk, you've got to go about 40 minutes before it does you an awful lot of good. And some people in here are walkers. I don't want you to get mad. I just want you to realize you've got to do more than the jogger. The jogger only goes out for 15 minutes and his body starts to change. Why it is that one exercise for 20 minutes burns more fat than another exercise for 20 minutes. But you're going to get it. Ready? Pay attention now. This is tricky. Picture me, and I'm on a stationary bicycle. Can you picture it? And I'm not even using my arms. I'm just sitting like, can you picture that? OK, and now I'm over here, and I'm on a cross-country ski machine. Now, let's say that I do it at the same heart rate, the exact same heart rate from here and over here. How much muscle am I using on a bicycle? When I'm on a bicycle, when I'm on a bicycle, I don't use much back, and I'm just resting my arms. So the point is, is that on a bicycle, it's very easy to use this one muscle and to use it quite at the upper level of how hard with the result that it starts to get lactic acid really easy. One muscle used hard. Now I get over on a cross-country ski machine and I use every muscle I've got practically, don't you? But the difference is that no muscle in your body is being used very hard. You see the difference? Yes? Yeah, okay. All right, now the result of that is that on a cross-country ski machine, each muscle is used at a low intensity. And I told you on this one, you use one muscle at a high intensity. What starts to happen at high intensity? What fuel am I burning? More and more sugar 
less fat. And when I shift over to this machine over here, since the muscles aren't working very hard, but each one is working, I can burn a higher percentage of fat. Now, the result is if you go from a bicycle at the same pulse over to a cross-country ski machine at the same pulse, the number of calories that you will increase goes up maybe 5%. It's not a big deal. But the number of fat calories that you burn goes up 25%. Okay, now what are you gonna do? You're gonna go rushing out, right? You're all gonna buy cross country ski machines. <laughs> That's not the point. The point in the end is, it's whatever exercise you'll do. So, but in general, use the most amount of muscle that you can at a very low intensity. She says, how many times a week I gotta do this? And the answer is, I don't know. Uh, everybody wants a number three times a week for half an hour. Next question. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much.